Okay, super easy EFB setup, throttle calibration, and I'll show you how to connect your SimBrief and Navigraph accounts to the INI Builds A350. So we need to power up the aircraft first, switch our batteries on, all four of the switches right there, external power one and two, and that is all that's required to get the EFB up on the left, also known as the OIP, I believe. So to get started, basically we're gonna spend all of our time here in the options menu here under utilities and you see we have a bunch of options here and so first let me explain how the nose wheel steering works in the a350 so if you have a separate axis for nose wheel steering you are going to want to go here to rudder controls tiller and set that to no that is what i'm using you can also turn off the auto tiller disconnect if you want basically that means Whenever you turn the tiller axes, like I'm doing here, that'll lock my rudder pedals from moving because they're separate. If you wanna go ahead and click the pedal disconnect switch manually, you can go ahead and switch and turn that off. So you can do it manually. Next on the OIS settings tab, you can swap between Lido charts, which are the uh, default Microsoft Flight Sim charts or Navigraph charts if you have a subscription. And I'll show you how to connect that here in a second. You also have your aircraft weight and units. Next, we'll jump to throttle calibration, and this is where you can calibrate your throttle. If your reverser is on the same axis as your throttle, then you can hit yes here. I'm using the TCA Airbus throttle, and I just have my global dead zone set to no. And then here on the right side, it's really super easy. Basically, you put your throttle in the position you want it. So max reverse currently, and I click on max reverse. You can then move your throttle to where you want your idle reverse. You click on the idle reverse. You go to idle, you do the same thing, go to climb and click. So basically you just move your throttle to the position you want for that detent. You click on the button and it sets that as a detent. It's, I mean, it does not get easier than that. Thank you, INI Builds for making that simple. Next, we have the sound and cabin options. You can choose a different language if you like for the cabin announcements. You can turn on and off the noise canceling headphones. And then you have a few other uh, preference options down here. On the next page, we have volume control. So if you wanna manipulate and make some things louder than others, you can do just that. And then we have on the third party tab, this is where you're gonna input your SimBrief user ID, which I've already entered here. You also have a Say Intentions API key. If you have a Say Intentions account, that's uh, AIATC for those who don't know. And then you have your Hoppy logon. And that is so that you can actually use the uh, CPDLC data link feature. Down below that, we have the option to choose between the SIM default nav data and your Navigraph data. And obviously right here, if you wanna connect your Navigraph account, you can either take a picture of this QR code or type in this URL right here. And that'll lead you to some instructions on how to connect your account. It's super easy. You can basically do it in like three clicks. And once you've done that, your aircraft is completely connected to SimBrief. You can start importing your flight plans uh, from your SimBrief profile, and you can start using charts from Navigraph. To access those charts here in EFB, it's actually down here at Terminal Chart. You can click on that. I'm currently at Doha. I can click on OTHH and then click on a airport. It might take a few seconds for it to load in. There it is. And we can scroll through here and actually see all of our charts. I'm just gonna click on this one, random one just as an example. And there it is, you can click on the screen and move it around. It also has a night mode. So that's how you get the charts into the EFB. And then back in the options, we can go to simulation. And here is where you can set your pause at top of the scent, uh, pause top of the scent distance from. So if you want basically it to pause 30 miles before your top of the scent, that's what that means there. You can also have your auto GPU disconnect when the pushback starts, auto step climb. So it'll actually step climb for you automatically as long as your altitude is set to the next altitude already. And then you have your time compression options. If you set it to auto, it'll automatically basically time compress when you get to a certain altitude to speed up your flight. And then here for max compression, it'll basically just tells them, hey, how much time compression do you want? Do you want two times or four times? Those are the only two options right now. And then you have the option to auto import step climbs if available from your SimBrief flight plan. And then we have performance mode, which will basically kind of uh, lower the, uh, and then we have performance mode, which as it says here, will unload hidden model parts to aid and improve overall performance in long flights. And that's pretty much all as far as the initial setup. But as a bonus, since that was so easy, I'll go ahead and show you 
through a few more of the settings. So everything here on the bottom is kind of in order uh, of what you actually need to use it for. So we're on the flight ops menu right here, which shows us all these things. We can click on ground. That'll take us to our ground options. We can manipulate the ground equipment, doors, cargo doors, all that stuff like that manually. If you have GSX, you can also manipulate the GSX menu right here in the ground menu. So I can click on request the boarding and the boarding will be requested. You can see it's already opening up everything and doing its thing. On the load sheet, you can actually import your flight plan right here, or sorry, your, your weight and balance. So click on sim brief import. That'll import everything into your screen. But then to actually load your aircraft, you're gonna have to click on set zero fuel weight and set fuel. You can see there it says loading fuel, please wait. There it is, all done. And now that we've imported our sim brief, uh, information we click on OFP here and we can actually look and see our entire sim reef flight plan information right here as well as little quick keys to get to each section and if we take a look at takeoff performance this is why uh, having sim reef so important you can actually import your sim reef information here as well I actually recommend importing it from the FMS once you set the FMS up but you can actually do the sim brief import as well and the same thing for your landing performance which we won't go over right now. I've already showed you the terminal charts. Then you have your in route chart, which actually just kind of shows you where your aircraft is in the world. It doesn't actually draw a line or anything like that. If we go back to flight ops menu and click on flight ops systems, you can see here, this is some of our kind of basic uh, flight details. Not that important. You don't have to input this, but you can also send brief import right here. This is usually the first thing you're gonna wanna do once you load up your EFB, although we're doing it last this time. Also here under utilities, you have the maintenance tab where you can actually check on and refill all your hydraulic fluid, your oil quantities. You can repair and replace your batteries, replace your brakes, service your APU. There's also situations. You can click on that and uh, you can actually uh, play through various situations as far as depressurization, bird strikes, dual engine failure, GPS jamming. And then you have your, your typical failures. You can fail basically any system on the aircraft. And then lastly, we have panel states, so you can actually jump to a cold and dark state on ground with power, with the APU running, or straight to ready for takeoff for those who want that. But that's it. I think the EFB is actually very uh, well organized and fairly user friendly. But this video is made just in case you have any issues or questions about anything. But hopefully this video was helpful for you in some way. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions, I do have a few other tutorials on the A350. And until next time, remember you have three choices. Give up, give in, or give it all. You got peace, love, and God bless you. I will see you guys next time, next video. Thank you. <laughs>